Hello everyone, I'm Ellie and today I am bringing to you the writing challenge Pixie Palaces. This challenge is about exploring and looking for clues that show evidence of the pixies that are currently away from Grimm & Co right now. Pixies are quite naughty, so even when Graham Grimm tries to keep them inside, they don't always listen. Also, there's so many out there in the world that either choose for us not to see them, are too small to be seen or are hiding that they couldn't possibly all live in Grimm & Co. I hope you're really excited to get out and about in nature and find some cool habitats and maybe some secret habitats and use your imagination. You are going to need a pen and paper, an offering of some kind, think an acorn or a small stone or a pretty leaf, some time to get up close and personal with nature, a mobile phone or some coloured pencils and paper, and a big handful of courage and imagination. Step 1. Think about your environment. How many magical creatures are living around you in the world that you can't see? Begin to imagine what these creatures are doing every day, so while you're at school, what are they doing? What colour hair do they have? Do they have hair? What do they smell like? What do they taste like? Anything at all that you can think of to do with these magical beings, have a think about that in your brain. Step two, go on a walk or in your garden and see how many you can spot. This is Pixie Palaces and they're very well disguised so keep your eyes peeled. The majority will be in woods and parks, so ask if you can go on a pixie hunt with an adult. But if you can't wait for a time when you can all go exploring together, then there will definitely be pixie palaces in your garden, so they can get you started. Now, pixie habitats could be, these are just some examples, a hole in a tree, this is an obvious one, but pixies aren't always obvious, so they could also be a crack in the shed, some leaves at the bottom of a drain pipe could be a den. A bird bath could be a swimming pool for them. Toadstools hidden away under a bush. Make sure while you're exploring these habitats that you don't disturb anything or go out being really loud. Although cheeky, they're incredibly shy creatures and may move to a different home before you get there if you go stomping around like a bull in a china shop. So make sure you're quiet and respectful of these homes. Step three. Once you've found a home that you really like the look of, either draw a picture or get a grown-up to help you take a picture on their phone if you don't fancy yourself much of an artist, but I'm sure you're all wonderful artists. So I'm going to go out now and have a look and see if I can find any homes in my garden. I think I've spotted one! Yes, this is definitely a pixie home. And another! There's literally so many pixie palaces. Step four. Come back inside once you've got your picture and write a story about the pixie that lives there. Use your imagination as much as you can. Remember that the pixie isn't going to see this story so you can be as wild as you like. Really go crazy. You don't want to offend a pixie but we don't have to worry about that here. You can decide to write an exciting story about the pixie that lives there and what they get up to or a description of the habitat or a description of the pixie themselves. If you're feeling really creative, do all three. You might even want to come up with a whole book about the pixie family and write a biography for each one. For descriptions, think about the senses. What the pixie or how smells, sounds, feels and looks like. Maybe not taste, but who knows, maybe t pixies taste good. Include as much detail as possible. For sight, think about colours and shapes. For touch, think about texture, temperature, etc. Hopefully this will get the juices flowing and you'll want to write a story now anyway. My pixie, for instance, has abnormally large feet, a purple nose that's as cold as ice and short spikes on top of their head. They smell like freshly cut grass, have an infectious laugh and roll around like a bowling ball. Step five, 
after you've finished your wonderful stories and descriptions, it'd be super lovely if you could go back to where you found the habitat and leave an offering for the pixie. So I've already said this could be a leaf or a stone, something like that. And whatever you choose to leave them, you can be sure that the pixie will appreciate it, even if they would never say thank you because they're far too cheeky. Step six, this one comes with a warning. So it's only for the brave. If you're feeling brave, go for it. If not, leave it at step five. So if you're feeling really brave, you could whisper your story or description to the pixie home. Hopefully it'll go down well or your words will get carried away on the wind. If not, you better get ready to run. They may be small, but they're certainly fierce. I really hope you've had a lot of fun with this writing challenge and you've created some amazing pixie things. If you want to share your writing with us, we would love to hear it. So it's at Grim and Co on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and we would love to hear from you or you could email at us and we, we're so excited to see your work. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching.